Hello, my pretty awkward fam. Welcome back to a strategy with Meg. I was originally going to do an episode about my road to seven figures, but I recently just did an episode about my road to six figures. And the, the reason I'm changing, and it's funny, I'm even, you're like, Megan, I didn't even know that was your podcast plan. I don't have your podcast plan in front of me. Why are you telling me this? I'm telling you this because I think it's a good lesson. One, I am going to do that episode. It is going to happen. But two, and I kind of have done something similar in the past, but two, it's because I've gotten a question uh, twice in the last, actually in, gosh, within two hours of each other um, about something that I want to share. And I just noticed this come up a lot in coachings that I've done, questions from people in my DMs, people that I'm talking to who are considering joining my program. It's come up a ton. I'm like, this is something that we got to talk about. And it's going to be short and sweet for you because I don't want you to overthink it. And that's a huge part of it too is should you switch to group coaching or a lower ticket offer if your audience is constantly telling you they cannot afford your one-on-one, right? And, or what should you start with? Should you start with one-on-one or should you start with groups? So we're going to dive in and that's what we're going to talk about today. And so I got two messages back to back. It was really wild. I remember so vividly, I was taking my dad to go get blood taken like two weeks ago. It was, yeah, two weeks ago from when I'm recording this. And I was just like waiting for him as he was getting it done. And so I was checking my messages and I had a message from someone saying, Hey, I joined the Sosa wait list. I'm interested in, in joining. I just have a question is I want to, I want to know if I could use this program to build out my group program. I noticed you said one-on-one. Uh, can I use it to also build out my group program? And literally two hours later, I had the same exact question, like almost phrased exactly the same. So much so that I even sent the screenshot of that original message to the second person. Obviously I took out that person's Instagram handle, any identifying information. I was like, wow, back to back. And so one lesson here for you before we dive into what you should do. Lesson here is I decided to say that it's to help online coaches book out their one-on-one coaching to get a little bit more specific and niche down in this launch. Right. And I was very hesitant to do that because I also help service providers in this program. I've had many a service provider go through this program, copywriters, bookkeepers, VAs, uh, designers, like all different types of service providers. Anyone who basically is using social media to sell a service or a, uh, just to sell a service coaching is a service too. So whether it's done for you or it's coaching. So I was really hesitant to not say coaches and service pros. And I was really hesitant to say, book out your one-on-one coaching because I have had many people go through this to use it, to create a group and sell their group. And I was like, oh gosh, I, I got to follow my own advice, right? I got to follow my own advice. And my coach and mentor was like helping me through this a lot too on our last call. And I got really inspired by that. I was like, okay, ugh, okay. Trust it, Megan, trust it. And so I did, I changed the, the, the wait list description to say a 16 week group coaching program to help coaches book out their one-on-one coaching. And then almost the next day I get these two messages about, Hey, d- can I actually use this for my group? And I was like, man, this is the power of niching down. The second you do the people who fall outside of that who were interested are going to message you and start that conversation and say, Hey, can I also do this? Yes. Now, when you have it so, so, so broad, sometimes they won't even ask and they'll, they'll think it's, it's not for them because of, because it's so broad, it's kind of wild how that works. Like I've had this happen so much with people I've worked with where the second they get a little bit more specific to an age group or a bracket or stage of life, or even, um, identifying gender. If someone says I help women, right. Whatever it is, people outside of that identity will say, Hey, do you also help this? And I'm not saying that you need to niche down that specifically or anything like that. I have plenty of clients who don't and have very successful businesses. And I didn't for a long time and had very successful business, except in the beginning. I did. I did niche down in the beginning. And I, I really think it's important too. That's just a whole other hill I'll, I'll die on. So anyway, that was something that I was like, wow, that's so wild. Yes, it can. It can totally help you with that. I've had many people use this to, to build, a, to build, create, launch and sell their program. And that's the, that's the whole point of it. The program is there for the 16 weeks to help you create, launch and sell your program, whether it's one-on-one or it's group. But I recommend most people start with one-on-one. So if you already have a booked out one-on-one and you want to use it for that, great. You could totally do that. The reason, and this is something came up on in the so so anyone who was signed up for the social waitlist, I did a bonus call with them. So if you are on the social waitlist and you didn't receive your replay, 
you might've signed up later. Let me know. I will send you that replay. Just email support at meganelina.com. Be like, Hey, I never got my replay. I never got the replay. And I'm on the social wait list. Amazing call. It was so great. And a couple people asked about this. They said, Hey, you know, I've been selling my one-on-one and it doesn't, or I've been trying to sell my one-on-one and it doesn't seem to be clicking. Like, I feel like I'm not either communicating the value well enough or something's going on, right? Should I sell a group program? Should I downsell to a group because it'll be more affordable? I can get more people, et cetera. And you know, there's there's not like hard and set fast rules, but there's a couple things that I talked to them about that I wanted to share with you. So one is whenever people say like, I've been really consistent about selling this thing, I always go, okay, tell me what consistency looks like for you. And in my book, consistency is truly, are you doing it? the same way you said you're going to. Meaning if you say, I'm going to send an email every week, I'm going to post twice a week and my audience can expect me every Monday and Wednesday, or I'm going to do a podcast once a week or once a month. And then all of a sudden you do it for like, let's say you want to do podcasts. You say you're going to do podcasts every week. You do it two weeks in a row. And then you, you don't for two months. They have learned they can't trust you in that way. Like that's, it's just how it is, right? It's just the facts. So consistency doesn't mean every day. That's not what it means. If you can't commit to weekly podcast episodes, don't say you're going to do weekly podcast episodes. Say, I'm going to do twice a month. I'm going to do once a month and then add them. Say once a month, I promise an episode. And then if you have a month where every week you put an episode, amazing. It's just bonus for them. And that's great. You're over delivering under promise, over deliver always, 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 because the worst thing that can happen is if like, you're saying you're going to do this thing. And I've done this. I've been like, I'm going to do this series every Wednesday. I've literally done this a few times. And then I'm like, oh man, I don't want to do this series every Wednesday. Why did I say I was going to do that? (laughs) Right. And it's just like, no, don't do that. Don't, don't put a timer to it if you're not ready to commit to it. And so When I ask people that, I'm like, how consistent have you been? I find out that it's not really been that consistent. So that's one. Um, But also I find a lot of times it is the communication of the value of the offer. So there's two parts to this. It's the value that their audience isn't getting. Like they don't understand why they should actually pay for this offer. They don't understand the value. And secondly, is it something they think is worth their problem, this problem that you're going to help them solve? Is it something they think is worth paying for? And that's a huge thing. If they're like, you know, this is a problem I have and it sucks, but I don't think it's worth $400 a month to fix it. They're not going to, right? And so it's our job to make sure we are actually solving problems people want to pay to get solved. That's one, right? And I and number two is if there are problems people want to pay to get solved, we have to communicate why our solution is the best. That's a tall order. It's a lot. And, you know, I want to just give you kind of a breather here. If you didn't go to school for marketing, if you are not a business coach or marketing coach or someone who's studied messaging in depth or have done it a lot, like you've been putting out content consistently, you've seen what works, seen what doesn't give yourself a break, right? I work with a lot of health coaches, a lot of life coaches, uh, a lot of people in that realm. And they're so hard on themselves because they're like, man, I know my coaching is so good, but it's hard for me to communicate the value. And I'm like, that, what, that's not your job. Your job wasn't to be a marketer. Your job was to be a great health coach or your job was to be a great life coach or career coach. Your job wasn't to write a really good Instagram caption or email. Like that's not what you're trained in. Right. And that's what my program helps people with. That's people like me. And are there other marketing and business coaches? That's what I do. And that's why I'm so passionate about what I do is because I know how amazing these coaches are, how much people need this work, but the, the disconnect is they don't get it. The audience is like, I don't understand why I should invest in your offer, or I don't think my problem is worth solving the way you're describing it. And that's why it's so important to make sure you are actually describing a problem that they think is worth solving, right? They want to pay to solve, right? And so one of the girls on there, we were talking and we realized I was, I was like, uh, she said, she's been really consistent. I was like, okay, awesome. Tell me what that looks like. And I asked her, when's the last time you shared your story? She's like, you know, it's been a while. It's been a while. And it's been so long that I don't, I don't even think we, we could pick an exact day. And I said, that's a huge thing. That's a huge disconnect. So you might be sharing educational content up the wazoo, right? All these how to's, et cetera. That is not going to get people to invest in you as a coach alone, because when someone is purchasing a program, that's a service where they're one-on-one face-to-face, or even if it's group, 
and they're face to face and they're going to spend time with a human face to face, they've got to trust that person. They've got to be like, I feel like I can actually be myself and I can feel seen and heard and they get me because they've been through it. They've experienced it. And when you don't share that, when you don't share that you've experienced it, or let's say you haven't directly, but you've helped so many clients who've experienced it. You don't share those client stories in depth. They don't have that reason to trust you. It's like, great. You read a book and you went to a class, you took a class or you got a certification. Awesome. I love that you like have those skills, but will you be empathetic? Will you be able to hold space? Will you be able to deal with my emotions when they're happening? Like, what, can you hold space for that? Right. That's huge. And when you don't share that you've been through it and you can get it and empathize with them, it's hard for them to trust you. And so I said, I think that's a huge, huge thing that your content has been missing is telling your story really consistently. So they trust you and they get it and they go, oh my gosh, they've literally been through this too. And look, they've come out on the other side. It's possible. I trust them so much more because they've been in, they've been through the shit. They've been in the hard part of it. Right. And that's why I always share my story. I try to share my story once a week in one way, shape or form. And so that was a big change. And then I had some other people say, do you recommend sharing it just on your feed? I said, I recommend you sharing it everywhere once a week in your email, in your podcast, in your, wherever you're showing up, don't create new platforms right now. If you're just on Instagram, share it in your stories and share it in your feed at least once a week, both. Right. And you can kind of like cross promote what you were talking about, leave something just for your stories and say, Hey, um, the Instagram post that I made actually started the story. So make sure you go read that and then come back and watch the stories. And then your Instagram post, you can say, Hey, in my stories today, I'm sharing, um, some tidbits that I'm not sharing here. And it's like the, the juice I'm leaving. I'm leaving the end of the story for stories, right? Lots of stories here. So many stories, but you're sharing your story through those different platforms. And if you also have email sharing it through email, at least once a week podcast is just such a natural thing. I, I think that's pretty easy to do. Um, and so that was a huge thing we realized. So that's one thing I want to say about that is I don't want you to give up on your one-on-one it could be that you really need to share your story a little bit more about why this is such a incredibly impactful coaching is because you've developed the process, the framework that you help people through in your one-on-one you've developed, through, developed it through your own experience. You've come out the other side and you use this process. You already tried and tested it on yourself and with other people. Right. And so it's so important to to share that. And the most powerful way to share that is through story. Right. And I'm not talking Instagram stories. I'm talking about your story. I just want to make that really clear. <laughs> I want to make that really clear. Uh, so that's, that's huge. And of course, if you are signed up for our mastering sales through storytelling challenge coming up, you're good to go. We're going to go through that in depth. Like you're going to walk out of that with like such a solid story to share and many ways to share it and a 30 day content calendar. So you're good to go. If you're not registered, make sure you register. We start on April 10th. It is coming up. Oh my gosh. It's coming up. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, it's very, very soon. Go to megnelaney.com forward slash free dash April dash challenge. I'm pretty positive. Every time I talk about it, I'm like, is that the link? Megan, you should know this. Do what I say, not as I do. Yeah. Megnelaney.com forward slash free dash April dash challenge. It's also the link in the show notes. So you could get it there, but register for that. It's going to be mind blowing. It's gonna be so good. You're going to have so much good sales story content to walk away with. So going to be amazing. Uh, so that's, that was a huge thing. Then we were talking to someone who has a slightly different situation. I'm not going to share all the details because I want to keep their information private, of course, but they have a kind of coaching that is very, it can feel very isolating. I should say like the experience the client is going through. Right. And I will use another example of an old client who has, has a similar, they don't, they don't help with the exact same thing, but it's similar in the sense that their client, they were, they were helping women who were, had binge eating, um, um, who were, who were binge eating very consistently and wanted to overcome binge eating. And that was something that we realized, well, they, they realized it before I started working with them. But then when we were, started working together, we realized it like very extreme is when these women who are going through this like binge eating episodes and, and really just feeling it, it's, it's all consuming. It's all they think about it's night and day. They felt so alone. And while one-on-one coaching is great, especially because the coach had been through it again, they shared their story constantly. They do such a great job of that. Such a great job of that constantly still to this day, sharing their story. They're so far removed from it because they're, they've been recovered for so many years so it's, they feel the, the client feels a little bit like, yes, I feel connected to you because you've been there, but you're so not there anymore. Whereas when they join a group, 
they're like, yes, I have this amazing guide, this amazing trusting coach who's been there, who empathizes with me, who gets me and who can take me to where they are. But I also have women who are in it, who are actually in it right now, who are at the same place. It's why I'm such a fan of groups. I'm such a fan of masterminds. I think it is so invaluable. I love one-on-one coaching. I love it. And I think there's a time and place for it. But I think that groups are so incredibly powerful for certain types of certain types of problems that are being solved, right? And so binge eating is one. Man, that can be such an isolating feeling. You feel embarrassed and shame and guilt and all of these things that you feel like you're on a deserted island and you're the only person going through it, but you're so not. And so when you have a group of women who are also going through that, you're like, oh, I'm not like the strange one. I'm not like the only person experiencing this, that alone, just the feeling of not being alone is a huge win is huge. That alone can be what gets people started on the road to recovery or the road to solving problems. Right. And so one of these other women on the call, she has a similar, again, it's not binge eating coaching, but she has a similar type of coaching where it's very vulnerable. It's like a huge identity for these people. And man, like when they, it's life-changing the type of coaching she does, like so life-changing. I'm talking, their life is flipped upside down and it can be so emotional and they can feel so alone if they can feel like it's their fault and they've got something's broken or wrong with them. And so when they're in a group, oh man, they feel like they found their people, like they're not alone. You know, it's kind of like whenever I have friends who become moms, if they don't already have other mom friends, they're like, I've got to find other mom friends because it is just a different life out there. It is just a different beast <laughs> when you are a mom. Right. And so it's like, you want to find that community. And so in those situations, I sometimes think it is okay to start with group coaching actually, and not one-on-one because the group atmosphere serves the client more, right? And so that's my two cents on that. I would say again, 90% of the time, usually one-on-one is going to be the answer for in your first few years. Now the question of, and this was a big question we talked about on this call is great, Meg. I've done the consistency. I've done the consistency. (laughs) What is that? I've been consistent. I've done the consistency. You can't do consistency. Um, I've been consistent with my content. I'm sharing my story. Like you said, I've gone through your challenge. I'm rocking it. I even joined Sosa and everything's hunky dory. We're, we're, we're sailing along and I've gotten some bites, but I'm just finding that the clientele that I serve where they're at in their life or the part of the world, one of the other women on the, on the call, like the people she coaches in the certain part of the world they're in the price she wants to charge, they literally cannot afford it. And I know people will say, if there's a will, there's a way, you know, you can always, you can always find the money. I just don't believe that. I, I, yes, in certain cases, totally a hundred percent. I've had people say they can't afford something and then come back a week later and pay in full. <laughs> literally. I've had that happen many times. So of course we are resourceful and we can figure things out. Now, sometimes though, especially if you have a client in a certain part of the world where they, they, the, what you want to charge is literally what they make in a month in their job. And they have no savings. They have no emergency. They have no access to credit cards. Or even if they do, they feel like it's really irresponsible. Then they shouldn't buy it. They probably should not be investing in that coaching at that price. Right. And so you want to take into consideration your clientele. Are they the kind of clientele, even if they're not in a certain part of the world where their income is lower, but maybe they are in a certain stage of life where they're already trying to solve this problem and spending money trying to solve this problem, right? Like they're, if it's someone who has like chronic disease and they're spending money at doctor, extra doctor's appointments, and maybe their insurance doesn't cover everything. And they're already spending money on solving this problem. Those are things you want to take into consideration. Or let's say you help people who are at the beginning stages of college and they don't have parents who are going to float the bill for these things. They're they're the ones who are going to pay for it and they have a part-time job and they're barely making ends meet. Like you've got to take that into, into consideration. And then of course is the economy. And I know a lot of people don't like to talk about it. I've heard a lot of coaches say like, don't talk about it. And, and it, it's okay. Like we don't, we don't, we don't need to like bring any attention to that. And I think that's bullshit. Cause it's just the truth. Like, come on, this is what's happening. You can't ignore that. You're like, unless you're only helping really, 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 really wealthy people who aren't affected by it. If that's your clientele, great. You don't need to talk about it. Totally. But I'd say 95% of my clients, their clientele is affected, is affected by it. 
And so that's when I would say, if you are, if you know, without a doubt, everything you're doing is connecting. People are inquiring. They're getting on a calls. They're so interested in your coaching. Every single person wants to do it. And it's just, they truly cannot make it happen financially. And this keeps coming up, coming up. And you say, if finances weren't an option or not enough, if it weren't an option, if finances were out of the picture, if everything, if you, you could afford this, like without a doubt, like you had the money ready to go, would you do this? And they said a hundred percent, nothing else is hesitating. I believe in this. I know I need this. I know I want to invest in it. Like I'm willing and ready to put money towards this. I just literally cannot set that aside. I don't have it. I won't be able to pay my bills. Right. I won't be able to eat. I won't be able to like, it'll be irresponsible of me. Right. Then if that keeps coming up, I would consider a group. I think it's a good idea to consider a group and consider how can I make, take this framework uh, from my one-on-one and create a group program with it or a lower ticket offer with it or an extended payment plan or something that can get some people in the door to start having the success and help you get clients. Right. Um, so that's something to consider. And, you know, one thing I was talking about with someone was, Hey, what you can consider, cause the type of coaching they do can be helped with any, uh, not any like stage of life. It is a specific stage of life, but any, it could be help anyone in the world really. So I said, why don't you save your one-on-one for people who have like certain jobs or certain parts of their life and certain set things set up where, you know, they can afford it. Right. I used to have a client who specifically helped high, um, high level HR managers who make really good money. And she charged a thousand dollars a month for her fitness coaching and didn't have a problem selling it. Right. Cause the clientele she was targeting was, used to be her. They had the money to spend. They had the disposable income. So you can save it for that in that sense, if you really want to keep your high ticket, high ticket, and then have a group for people who can't afford that. Right. And this way you still feel good because I, I don't think the solution is cut your prices, take double the amount of clients because man, you're going to burn out and you're going to be resentful. And all of a sudden you're like, I am doing the work that I believe should be charged 500 or a thousand a month. And I'm doing it for half the price and I'm exhausted and I'm burnt out and I'm really resentful and I'm not excited to show up. You also have to take into consideration you, right? Like, yes, of course we want to help as many people as possible and serve as many people possible and have our offers be accessible and have different, different levels of offers. But I also want you to remember, you have to take care of yourself. You've got to build a business that you are excited to show up for and that you're not going to resent and that you can make great money and you can build this life. Like you deserve that. And, I know, and you shouldn't for a second feel bad about that. And the other thing, the last thing I'll say about this topic is and I, I actually talked to um, a client about this when she was, she's raising her prices and she's like, such a beautiful question. I actually, you know what? I think I wrote it down. Cause I was like, this is such a good post. I'm going to thank you for this. Your clients, by the way, give you the best posts, the best, 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 best posts. Um, how do you feel about leaving clients behind when you raise your rates? So people who can't afford it. And I said, well, one is you have other offers like she does that they can afford. And so they're taken care of. And then two, I want you to remember if you are really treating your free content personally, like I treat my free content, I believe I could charge a lot of money for all my free content, this podcast included. I put so much time and energy and value into my free content. I don't post anything that is just to post anything. Every single thing I do is with such intention. And I know it's really valuable. I know it's helping people, whether it's the podcast an email, an Instagram post, I know that I could have charged for that. I know that like this upcoming challenge I'm doing, I could charge a thousand dollars for this easily. And it's a piece. It's a fraction of my program. It's a fraction of my program, which my program, I could charge $10,000 for it. And we don't, <laughs> I could charge so much for that because of the value it has, but I don't obviously. And I like to look at my free content as that my free content is a program. It's just, I'm making it free. Right. And the reason is I know not everyone can afford it. I know there is a huge portion of my audience that will never be able to pay me. I know that and, or anyone else, right? At least for a bit until things get going. And I know some people will never actually get their business off the ground because it's just probably not in the cards for them. They're just not as hungry or thirsty as they need to be to get it to happen. Or they just realize that entrepreneurship is not for them, but they still love following along and they still love learning and they still love creating and all this stuff. It's just not like the end all be all right. Like for example, my program, my Sosa program, it's not for people who want to 
have a plan B or people who want to just build a side hustle. It's for people who want to build a full hustle. Like they want this business to be their full-time income. That's who it's for. It's not for people who want to just a side hustle and make a little extra money. It's not. If that's, if someone applies and like, it's like, you know what? I'm thinking I want to do this business. I'm thinking I want to give it a go. Um, I would say, you know what? I, then I don't, don't join this program. Don't join it until you're like, yep, I want this to be my full-time income. Then join the program, right? And so there's a lot of people like that in my audience who are going to so enjoy my free content. And I love that, but I look at it as like my gift to the world, right? That's my gift is creating all this incredible free content for people who will just never, ever, ever invest for one reason or another. And that's okay. And I, I see people, and I've had to talk through clients through this. I see people get so annoyed and angry at that. They're like, ah, if you're not going to buy from me, don't follow me. And I'm like, okay calm down. I, I get it. I get it. I, you know, I mean, I don't get it. I, I, what I get is the people who constantly inquire, like are constantly applying for your stuff are constantly messaging you are taking up a lot of your energy and time and then never, ever, ever purchase. Yeah. I get that's annoying. Cause that's your time and energy. You could be spending with your clients who are, are purchasing and who people who are serious about buying. But I believe it's such a beautiful thing that you get to create this free content for your audience and you get to give back to the world because they're not going to be able to ever afford it. Or it's just not in the cards from it. They never want to fully go in on whatever you're helping people with, right? But they're still finding value. You're giving value. It's amazing. Like I always look at that. I'm like, I'm changing the world with this stuff. And I know a good subset of people are going to invest and help build this business and help support us expanding and all of that. And I, and I know that. And so I really look at my free content as its program in itself. So I want you to remember that you're not leaving anyone behind because if you're consistent with that, you are giving tons of value and you cannot discount that. You cannot discount your free content. It is, if you are doing it, like I teach my students how to do it and how I do it, man, it is value freaking packed. And they could just literally piece together your content and it takes a lot of time and move their business forward or move their health forward or whatever it is. Like I always say that I want people to be able to leave my free trainings or my content or my podcast or whatever it is, and be able to take one nudge forward. Now, do I save my proprietary methods, my frameworks, all my systems, my feedback, my one-on-one, -on -one, all of that? Yes. That's gilded behind the locked doors in my paid content, of course but I still want to give something for free to my people. And boy, do we give more than something? You know that, you know that if you've been here for a second, but it's, I love it. I never resent it. Not one bit. And I never resent it. Even if like I quit my business, I don't think I'd ever stop. Like I would, I wouldn't do as much, but I don't think I'd ever stop the podcast. I don't think I'd ever stop posting. Like I still think I'd share in some way, shape or form. You know, it's just, I just love it. I just feel so fulfilled by it. So that is one way to reconcile you switching your one-on-one -on -one to possibly a different clientele and then having your group program help those people who you originally were targeting for your one-on-one -on -one who are just like, Hey, I don't have it in the cards right now. I'm getting really hit right now with the economy. I, I want to do this, but I just can't, my budget's not there. And so do a little bit of digging, do a little bit of research, see what can be feasible for them. And remember too, people need to be stretched to take action, right? If it is I always say, I've had a few people sign up early for Sosa and I've had a couple of them say, oh my gosh, like I'm so excited and so nervous and feel like I'm going to throw up at the same time, like putting on this payment, but I know that's why it's right. And I said, hell yeah, I, if I don't get a little bit and this, I'm talking back in the be beginning, not now, cause I know you're probably like, Megan, you can afford this. You have the money. When in the beginning, when I didn't have a ton of money laying around and I had some, but it wasn't like. It's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta really work at this. I can't just like invest this much money and just sit back and be like, oh, well, it's okay. We got plenty more. It was like, oh crap, I gotta really do this. I had so much fire under me because of that. Like it lights a fire under you. And if you're paying for something and it's like it drop in the bucket and you forget that you even bought the thing, you're never gonna open it. You're never gonna move forward. And what's the point? Then it's just a waste. Then it's just a waste. Even if it was like a hundred dollars, then it's just a waste. You know, and that's why you don't want to underprice either. Because if you underprice, you're going to have people not show up and then they're just wasting their money, right? We don't want that either. And you're wasting your time. You're not in this just to make money. Yes, of course you want to make money, but you want to help people. You want to help them have results and transformations and, and feel incredible and then refer their friends. And how can they do that if they're not showing up? So you've got to get them 
to stretch themselves. And I always say that I create investments that stretch people, not stress them for the different levels that I have. Right. And I really encourage you to do that too. So I hope this episode helped you. I, I really believe 90% of people probably should start with one-on-one, but there are those exceptions, like I said, where the kind of coaching really helps them move forward faster when there's a group because they don't feel alone. So, so valuable. You might want to start with group coaching, or if the clientele you're targeting is you're constantly coming up against the pricing and you're doing the value, you know, you've been consistent in sharing your story. You know, you've been consistent in communicating the value, then maybe there is an opportunity for a group or a lower ticket item. But if you know, deep down, I haven't been that consistent with that. I haven't really shared my story. I don't think I'm communicating the value enough then that's something I can help you with. So stay tuned. We got a lot coming up. Make sure you register for the challenge. Go to the link in the show notes. It's going to really get the ball rolling for you. Um, And we have a special announcement. I think this episode is coming out the day before I announce it. Uh, But you know, you're my podcast peeps. So let's tell you now. Um, My Smart Online Success Accelerator program is opening in about two weeks from when this episode drops, which is wild. It's opening on April 18th. We will be open enrollment from April 18th to April 25th at a $500 discount. It's going to be 2997 or four payments of 777. It's four months, 16 week program. We're starting second week of May. And it's going to be a fun summer, my friends. This is going to be your rocket ship summer to building that full-time business. I am so freaking pumped. We already have a bunch of people in. Early words, sneaking in my action takers. I love you. So if you're interested, definitely message me to get on the wait list because we have some wait list uh, stuff going on before the 18th. So uh, definitely go there. Actually, I'll just link that in the show notes as well. But if you're like, hey, May, I don't even know if this is for me. Uh, This is where I'm at. Just message me. I will always, 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 always tell you. I even had someone inquire. And as we were talking, I was like, you know what? It definitely could help you. But I actually think for where you're at, you would do better with a VIP day. And we're doing a VIP day because it just, it's fits them better for where they're at. And so I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to just say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can afford it or you want it. So here, no, never. I always want the right people in the right programs. And I will lead you that right way. And maybe I'm like, you know what? None of my offers help you. You actually should go to this person. I have a Rolodex of amazing people. I have such a great network, like so many people I could refer you to. So if I don't think I can help you with any of my offers, I promise to point you in the right direction. Uh, I promise to never pressure you or convince you. And We are an open close cart. So once we're closed, we're closed and we won't open again until September. I want you to think about that timing. September, it's a four month program. So you, the whole idea is within the 16 weeks, you create, launch and sell your offer. If you already have created it and you're already selling it, we'll go back to the drawing board and make sure you created it the right way. You've launched it the right way. You've sold it the right way, right? Because a lot of times people are like, oh, I already did that. Is it working to the way you want it to? If not, you probably need this, right? And if you wait till the September round, you won't actually launch your offer till the end of the year or the beginning of 2024, that's a long time away, right? So I I just, I encourage you to think about that. Think about what stalling, what waiting that long will do for your business, how much further along you can be. It's like wild how much further along you could be into 2024. You could possibly be full-time in your business. You know, like I obviously can never guarantee, but we have people who've done it. We people who've done it really fast. We have people who've taken years. It, it just depends on the person. It depends on the person. It depends on their commitment, how much time they have, how many pivots or changes they make, how much they've already got built, right? There's so many factors that go into it, of course, but I just encourage you to question like the waiting because of that. So I'm very honest, we will open again, but it won't be until the fall and all those details will be coming out. You'll get an email on my email list. If you're on there tomorrow and we're going to post about it, but podcast people, if you're listening to this on the Monday, you already know. All right. So mark your calendar. If you have any questions, just DM me, but I hope this episode helped you regardless. If you are joining us, I really, really hope this helped you. And if you have follow-up questions, please let me know. I love talking about this. I love group group coaching. I love one-on-one. I love all of it. I mean, I think there's a time and a place for it. So message me, let me know if you have questions and have a beautiful rest of your morning, day, night, whenever this is, and I'll see you in the next one.